Oh, what is up, everybody? And welcome back to Arachnity of Fate, a Z, a bro. Um, tonight, episode uh, 22. I think just 22, because we're in the final stretch, and apparently 22 is pretty good on its own, but we'll see what happens. Um, so basically, boom, this is the comments. I only got four comments this time that I wanted to take a little looky look at. Um, and then there's something I want to immediately clarify right after, and then we're going to watch the new episode. So, first... Matthew Mercer did voice acting for Kiritsugu. That's super cool. I had literally no idea. Um, shout out. I like how you say, like, some of his other big roles, like, you know, like, Cole, Cole Cassidy, a.k.a. McCree, Levi, whatever. Oh, he did, he did Jotaro? Wait, I didn't know that. I haven't watched JoJo. Is JoJo's good? Let me know in the comments. Um, but, like, the reason I know Matthew Mercer is because of, um, because of, uh, D&D. &D. What's the freaking name of that? Yeah, not, um... Critical Role. Oh my goodness, I forgot the name of Critical Role for a second. I, I know Matthew Mercer because of Critical Role, so that's super cool. Of course he's in Fate. Why wouldn't he be, right? Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to point that out. This uh, is a fun point of foreshadowing about how Ryder said with Waver that he would be ready for action come nightfall, but the attack happens in the evening. So it's before his time frame he gives to Waver, which is, you know, another inconsistency because it was a fake, right? Which is still just so crazy to me because... I was so ready, dude, you have no idea how scared, for some reason, I was, like, not actually scared, but I was, like, I was so hesitant to, like, like, to say that I was doubting all that, because I was worried that I was wrong, and that people were gonna correct me, and I was gonna look stupid, you know what I mean? So I was just sitting here, like, please, please, <laughs> but it ended up working out, um... And, and then this comment, I'm just going to say, if we're forced with only the extreme choices, deontology is infinitely preferable to consequentialism. No, but it, no debate needed is self-evident. So this is in response to, like, the ethical stuff we briefly touched on. Um, I would agree. I would agree, I think. Uh, just because consequentialism is cringe, because it is kind of not really even a system. It's like a, it's like a non-system in my head, right? Because it's literally, like... You just kind of decide after. So it's like, it doesn't educate your actions at all. And at least deontology does, right? Even if I'm not a huge deontology guy. Um, but yeah, so I would agree with this. Um, I, I briefly looked at the timestamp and then I just saw that it was the ethical theory stuff. So I just kind of kept going. But yeah, so I, I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. And then um, answer to the reading comments in the video. The only point correction I have is about sniper rifles. I never said about Kiritsugu killing Lancer with a sniper rifle. My suggestion was for Kiritsugu to let Saber do her actual job and kill Lancer in their duel, right? Um, fair. I think I can understand why Emiya... Oh, that's why I was a little... People saying Kir Kiritsugu, that's Emiya. I just, I, I... Whatever. That's a problem, bro. Why do people got first and last names? And in Japan, they use both of them. Can we just use one, man? Because in my head, he's Emiya, and so I read Kiritsugu, and at first I was like, who? Just for, uh, but, uh, shut up, never mind. What I, my, my response to this idea of letting um, Saber kill Lancer is I can understand why Emiya wouldn't want that, because I don't think he would trust that she could kill him without getting wounded, or, or, or like, potentially lose. Because you say, I'm certain she would have been the winner, even fighting with one hand, since Lancer only had the anti-magic spear and Eerie was there to heal if necessary. Like, I agree with you. I would give it to, like, I would give it to Saber, like, nine times out of ten minimum, right? Um, but if you're the, if you're Emiya, who always has kind of done his jobs on his own, and also has a solution in his head that to him seems pretty like a guaranteed win, you know, I would, I don't blame him for trusting himself over Saber. I think if nothing else, it's in character for him to trust himself over Saber, um, and then if you just throw, if you kind of like even try to look at it super objectively and be like, okay, did Saber have a chance of losing in, in a fight like that where he's not just killing himself? Yes. Though I think it would be pretty, a pretty minuscule chance, like single percent, you know? Um, so I, that's fair. Um, but I don't blame him for doing that. Honestly, I think what would have been probably bad, you know what? New plan just dropped. I think what probably would have been better is if he held the um the because he gave he gave the command to archibald to have to command lancer to kill himself right uh so what if he just kind of like baited that over archibald's head and waited to see if saber was about to lose or get hurt you know if it's like if saber gets run through the stomach then he's like okay kill yourself now you know kill yourself now lancer right or if she like you know, if, if, if she gets put on the back foot pretty hard, if she's, like, obviously losing, then you drop the nuke. Because, uh, I again, I think the... Oh, let me turn my fan off, because I know it's a noise thing. Um, I think the biggest problem with him having Lancer kill himself is 
it removes all like rapport built with Saber. It basically makes Saber into your enemy. And that's exactly what happened is the relationship completely fell apart. So I could understand, and I think even Saber would understand a little bit more if they at least got to do their duel. And then if Saber was losing him jumping in, I mean, Saber still wouldn't like that at all, but yeah. So maybe I think that would have been a better, a, a slightly better execution. It still runs the risk a little bit with Saber. Um, and it's kind of a compromise between what you're saying and like what Emiya actually did. But yeah, I don't know. I don't blame Emiya too much for that one, honestly. Okay, now, last episodes, plural. Um, we basically had uh, <laughs> Sleeping Bag Waver. I forgot about Sleeping Bag Waver. Oh my goodness, Sleeping Bag Waver. Sorry, I completely, yeah, oh, I love this guy. Um, we had Berserker, that was a fake, a fake Iskandar come in, Yoinky, Sploinky, um, Eerie. Oh, that's still a problem, yeah. And then leave. And then Saber fights the wrong Iskandar for a little bit, but then they kind of figure it out. Uh, and then Kire uh, basically is really scary. Um, throws knives at the Matau guy, grandpa guy, and then orchestrates the most diabolical scheme I've ever seen. Um, let me clarify something that I straight up misunderstood. Um, cause I called, okay, this is embarrassing y'all. I don't like being wrong, but it is what it is. It happens to the best of us. Um, Tokiomi. For some reason, I did not think, I knew that they were, she, he was important to homegirl. I did not realize it was husband. And that, that's a really deeper develop, like that's, okay. And you're probably like, okay, but how, how did that happen? I don't really remember a scene where them two interacted, the, you know, homegirl and Tokiomi. And so... It's funny because I knew in my head that she was Rin's mom, and then I knew that he was Rin's dad, but for some reason, <laughs> I didn't put the two of them together <laughs> for some reason, um, because I feel like every time they've, like, interacted with Rin, they've been in separate rooms and, like, not really in her- so whatever. Maybe in, like, one of the early episodes, they very clearly did something, like, husband and wifey together that I should- that I just didn't- that I forgot about. Um, but in my head, I just did not have them clocked at all together. What I, what I thought, I kind of, and I kind of was unsure about it when I was recording the episode. And so I just said, eh, father. And I just made something up and prayed that I guessed right. Because then I wouldn't have to like correct myself. But no, I was straight up wrong. Is what it is. All right. The gamble almost paid off. Um, <laughs> you probably hear me hesitate in the video. Be like, oh no, her dad. <laughs> but the important thing, there's a few things about that. Um, a, it makes the love the love triangle way stronger, right? Uh, where not only he's mad at Tokiomi because I thought he was mad at Tokiomi. I, I kind of picked my my reasoning for why I thought that they weren't husband and wife was partially that I placed him at way older than I think he actually is. I, for some reason, I thought Tokiomi just gives off the impression of like a freaking old man. You know what I mean? Or like a middle aged man. And then homegirl, I keep saying homegirl because I don't want to find her name in my notes. Homegirl, um was, I thought, like, more of a young woman, right? I kind of placed her probably, like, early 20s, and then I pro probably, I think, placed Tokiomi probably, like, mid to late 30s, right? And so in my, in my kind of rank, and I kind of thought of him as, like, the, the patriarch of the household, of, like, the family name, so I kind of placed him as older because of that. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's the reasoning as to how that mis, that mis, uh, not miscommunication, that, like, uh, misinterpretation happened. Um, I thought homeboy was older, blah, blah, blah. What this changes is a lot. It makes the um, whole Karina, or yeah, Kari, yeah, Karina, Matau, no wait, Kariya. Do I have it? I think I have my, him in my notes, but one misspelled and one correctly spelled. Kariya, whatever. Mr. Young Matau. You want me to call me Young Matau? Whatever. What it, this whole situation completely gets like a level deeper with the context because now his love for homegirl, right, which is, I think, why he chokes her out, which is why there's like the sexual tones into the scene, all that kind of thing, um, becomes like a love triangle thing where, or not love triangle, but like, you know, three parted love thing where he's the one that kind of got cucked a bit, you know? So, you know, it's like, oh, I loved you. And I even, like, was, like, friends with your kids, with your husband or whatever, and your husband betrayed you and your kids, and that kind of thing, right? Um, and so, to, to my family that I hate, right? And so, um, yeah, when he actually goes full send on her, 
it's or and that that makes his relationship with Tokiomi of him hating Tokiomi so much that makes that a lot more like you know powerful and make a lot more sense because it, it's more than just you sacrificed Sakura to the Mataos. It's more than that. It's you also took the girl that he's obviously got some lust for. You know what I mean? Um, I definitely have someone I love. If I'm going to die, then I might as well. And then he's on top of her. Like, he definitely had some feelings for her, right? And so it's like, you took my girl, too. That's, you know, that's kind of in the in the subtext a bit, right? Um, they're both feuding for her. And so that whole, that gets crazy. And then obviously him killing, or not really, but him getting, um, what's called, like, he's fake. He's like the, he's not actually the killer of Tokiomi. Him getting, uh, you know what I mean where she thinks that he killed Tokiomi, that makes that, like, a lot more valid, too. It makes even more sense, right? Um, and then it makes this scene just so much more depressing, and yeah. Basically, this is... I'm Gilgamesh up here. <laughs> I'm Gilgamesh. I'm like, who are these people again? Yeah, pretty good play. <laughs> Forget, I love Gilgamesh, bro. <laughs> what a goaded character. Um, but yeah, so we're clear on that now. Um, I really do like that... that that thing it's something that i knew i knew something like this would happen the entire time i've watched this show ever since episode one where they just exposition dumped a bunch of families and relationships i'm just, i just knew that my brain's not good at that kind of shit you know this is it's why i have to take notes it's because i literally will forget korea's name on episode 22 we're recording 22 right now i'm still gonna forget the characters names it just is how my brain works right and so i i knew from the beginning i'd get something but Hey, that's why, that's why it's a reaction, you know? It's why, you know, so we get, we get all the juice out of it. Because if your boy was watching this casually, I'd be sitting here being like, uh, who are these guys? <laughs> Who's that guy that he just killed? <laughs> like, I, I, your boy wouldn't be, hip, hip, you know, have any idea what's going on. So, we're good. Um, I love Escape, Skondar and Waver. I like Saber a lot, too. Saber's really grown on me. Um, just by seeing her, I don't know. She started growing me more. I really do like Saber. Anyways, um... This next episode should be exciting. I'm scared. <sighs> what is going to happen to him, him now, Korea? Korea's freaking hoed. He, he, he's about to just... He's about to be the berserker now, you know? All right. <sighs> 22. I just read the title. All evil in this world. I probably shouldn't have read it, but that's okay. I, I, want, I don't want to lie to y'all and pretend I didn't read it. Whew. Episode 22. Let's get this going. Get yourself a drink. Get yourself a snack. Get yourself a, um, um, a drink. Get yourself a snack. What is going on? Episode 22. Let's just see this going in. A three, a two, a one. Bang. Pip on Patreon. Waver! Um, subscribe, like, etc. Comment. Oh, shoot. Is my stuff set up correctly? Please, 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 please. Mm. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Audio, 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 audio. Okay, we're good. I assume this is somebody he mind controlled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Waver just admits it. Dude, I love his condor. Yeah, I talk with the come talk with the old man. You got nothing better to do, Waver. Come on. Go socialize. Go socialize, Waver. <laughs> you know what's crazy? If this episode was just Waver going to a club and failing to hit on girls while Iskandar tries to wingman him for 23 minutes, I'd probably like that even more than whatever the episode's about to be. You know? Just give me a filler episode, a bottle episode of Waver at a club. That's actually just peak fiction, you know? Oh, uh, come on, Waver, you only live once. You know, Skandar all, like, trying to hype him up. Ah, you gotta, you gotta, you know, get in there, man. And Waver's just like, uh, I'm too shy. I just want to be a wizard. You know, I love Waver. For the, for the sake of a world where nobody will cry. That's what Emiya's all about. That's what Emiya's all about. Emiya. What's good with you, man? What's your uh, wish going to be if you get the chance? Honestly, bro. So I know one thing that I, I was thinking about, Fate Stay Night, I don't, that might be it. The um the sequel, the sequel to this that, well, technically I think this is the prequel to the next thing. 
and I just watched this. I, I did it a little out of order because your boy's a little freaky like that. You know, what if it was freak cubed instead of pink cubed? Anyways, um, I know there's a sequel, and I'm almost certain Saber's in it too. I'm almost certain. The thing about that, I don't actually know, but I I, I feel like that would just have to be the case. I don't know. Point being, I'm very uns. Um, but that kind of makes me think that the Grail's not going to be got, if you know what I mean. Because, like, something that crazy can't happen if this is a prequel. The structure of a prequel? I don't know. Something I was just thinking about. Dog, it's nighttime. Is the sun about to rise soon? Yeah, I appreciate you. No, it's a shame he's mind controlled. Oh, it's a shame he's being mind. Oh, the sun's starting to crest. What do you mean real? Do you know? Whoa. Did the spell fade or has this guy got like some sort of special... He just figured out what's going on. He might not know about the magic part, he just thinks it's... Aww. Dang, he just adopted Waver. If I was an old man, I would want to adopt Waver too. I don't know if Waver does either. He knows how important it is to him. Ooh, that music trill. Ooh, that kind of worked. Ooh. Bro, the Waver character development. I'm so glad I invested in Waver. That was like investing in Apple, bro. Jeez. Yeah, Emiya, what is going on? I mean, he was at the church. Oh, uh, yeah. Maya really did get hoed. She just got ran over by a skondar, bro. A fake Iskandar, to be fair. Berserker. You didn't even factor Saber in? See, this is- Emiya's losing it, bro. I did- really? She's like the entire point! I 
Oh, yeah, and they got Yuri down. This is so bad. It's just the two of them, and he does not want to talk to her, bro. Say wait. I know you're about to. Stop edging me. Wait, you're not going to? Oh, my goodness. That had the makings of a dramatic walk. Are we in the underground place that they were doing the rituals in? Ryanosuke? I th we are. Oh my goodness, why are we down here? He's hiding in the... The lair of a dead person, bro. Waver did, though. Waver confirmed smarter than Emiya. Dude, this is getting so- this is going so wrong. Has he now? What is this evil looking circle, bro? What's it doing? Is it sustaining her or is it like draining her? What is it doing? Probably sustaining. You think so? You think that's what he was doing? You gotta hit it with a crazy line, Eerie. I need a crazy line right here. I need the life-changing Kire destroying line right here, Eerie. Come on. Oh my goodness, and she's building it up. She's building up again. Okay, I mean, it's pretty much just saying his line, his, his dream. I mean, that's fair, yeah. What do you think of that, Kyrie? Kyrie! <laughs> He's like, what is that shit? <laughs> Is she praying or just laying down? She almost looks like she's in a prayer. Yeah, that's my thing. That, I think that's kind of true. I think that's kind of true. That's my worry of if he... Yeah. Yeah, but the entire point of, like, the Mattel thing is that sacrifice doesn't give you something in return, necessarily. Right? That was, like, the entire... He is too kind to choose ideas. Ah. I don't know, bro. I won't waver to get it. You're just gonna punch her in the face? Okay. Oh, this is also bad. This is also doubly bad. Really? Really? You can do so much more. Make it into a theater play. Don't just strangle the... Yo! Really? Really? Wow. What? Just like that? Are you... You're... That's insane! That- Wait, yeah, she's dead. Wow, they just killed Eerie. I thought he was gonna, like, do something with her, bro. Not just kill her in a- in- in- in Caster's basement. I mean, dude, she did say that he sacrificed loved ones before, so I guess, like, he's like, eh, this- this bargaining chip don't mean nothing. It's not even fun for entertainment, I'm just gonna- 
Damn. Ripiri. It's let it's wow, and now look who you have left, Emiya. It's you and Saber. It's you and Saber, Emiya. Emiya plus Saber versus Waver plus Iskandar. Like, it's just not fair. This game's not fair. <laughs> He's not even listening to Waver. I can't believe Eerie's dead. Oh, man. Tonight? Dude, Emmy is on a Emmy is on a bad Emmy is on a I actually I'm I, I I can appreciate his ideals. I I don't I, I think his execution's gonna fumble and it's gonna all fall apart and it's gonna be really bad. I'm not feeling good about it. What is going on? Hello? Hello? Is that Berserker stuff? He's kind of the wild card right now. Hey? Is it like a come get me? Because the church is out of commission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's somebody gloating. I think it's probably QDA gloating. Being like, come get me. Yeah, yeah. Come get him! That's, dude, this is why me and Iskandar are on the same wavelength, bro. I love this guy. This is my... This duo, bro. Like, Emiya and Saber, bro. Oh my goodness, it's so over. Bro, and he's saying, I gotta, like, doing it for the writer class? What a goaded thing to say. Give me my wheels, ear. Oh, that's different. You're actually summoning a horse. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna say, "Get up, Pat, Pat, get up, get up." <laughs> he's scooting. <laughs> I can't believe Yuri's dead. I'm pissed about that. Bro, bro. Are you gonna release him? Whoa, what are you doing? <gasps> He's... Waver! Waver! I love this guy so much, bro! That's the realest thing I've ever seen. He just said, do your thing. He's gonna cry. <laughs> You're still my master, boy. Come on, get on my oars. You have no reason to listen to me. Oh, <laughs> dude, I love them. He's doing the freaking this thing. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> We've been through some shit together. Oh my god, dude, he used his command spells to say, Yo! <laughs> See, this is the relationship that cannot be beat. His cape? You're using his cape. Yeah. The last command being, Conquer the world, bro. Oh my goodness. Dude, I'm telling you, this is the duo. I mean, the only one that comes close is Gilgamesh and Kirei at this point. And like, this is like Ryanosuke caster energy, bro. Where there's just like, 
it's us two against the world. Let's make some let's make some shit happen. But to beat everyone else? Yeah. He's not trying to speed run, he's trying to destroy. Dude, and now they're now Saber's still looking for Eerie. Dude, I wonder if Saber's gonna find her corpse. And then Saber goes on a crazy thing. Kid, you, I mean, you gotta have a plan. Gilgamesh stomach. Sorry. That's pretty ballsy. I mean, he has enough command spells. He could just say, come back. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's smart. Dude, he is smart to ask for permission. Man, they might break the grail. It would be fate. Fate zero. The fate was zero. That they got nothing out of it. They got nothing. Oh my goodness. They got zero. Holy crap. It's all a foreshadow. I can't believe Eerie's dead. What do you mean by that? You see that arrangement is still okay? He's a judge of whatever's fun, I guess. So that would be my answer, but. Holy crap, we're going back here? Why are we going back here? Oh, flashback. The things I'd do to jump into that pile. Sorry? Aww, it's Prisma Illa. No, not a cup. A cup with seven big lumps? Oh, the grail. She dreamt she was going to become the grail because they're, they're the vessel, I guess. Of which that'll be brought about. Wait, so with her dead... What is going on right now? Maybe she's not completely... Maybe she's dying right now. This is her dying. Hello, oh, dude, what is going on? Yeah, this isn't a flashback. This is current, I believe. He'll come get me. No, who am I? What? <laughs> I thought she was gonna be like, Emiya's gonna come get me if I'm in the grail, but no. Surely, surely it will do that. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so I guess her dying sent her like spirit to the grail, or she in some some way. Okay. <laughs> um. Weird. So, what's interesting about that is that maybe there's a chance there could be a reconvening, right? 
like if Saber gets the Grail for a moment, if Emiya gets the Grail for a moment, then they could see her. Otherwise, she's just kind of stuck there in like her spirit or whatever, and it's kind of a GG. Um, wow, yeah, rest in peace, Eerie. I mean, the thing is, we knew she was dying, so I'm just surprised by how I thought I thought they were gonna string her along, bro. I was expecting like a, a final episode of her being like. You know, I don't know, in some, like, weird saw trap, you know? It's like, oh, Kirei's standing there, la like, laughing with his little jigsaw mask on. Oh, you come close, her arms get ripped off. Like, you get you into that? Like, you know, just to be a dick. But no, he just says, ah, I'm just gonna... And he kills her. It's like, all right, Kirei, sure. I guess it's kind of funny if he smashes the grail to pieces in front of Emiya. It's like he's killing Eerie again, because Eerie's in there. So, in a way... But, yeah, okay, my new problem with Emiya is, um, I mean, not new, because I'm pretty sure I've said this a few times, but Kirei says it really well, right? Uh, conflict is human nature. You will destroy humanity. I, I think that's absolutely correct. Um, you will, if nothing else, irreversibly change humanity. I love, by the way, I Waver commanding him three times is so perfect. The Sea at the World's Edge. Yeah, bro. This, uh, no, get my headphones back on. I want to hear Waver do it again. That was so good. Fight until you gain victory. He's commanding him things that he's already going to do to say that he supports him. And that he doesn't want to use him as a tool, bro. This is like the penultimate version of what I've believed to be the best course of action the entire time, which is to like bond with their servant. I think that's really smart because it he's literally going into the combat without a command spell because he doesn't need a command spell because they're already on the same wavelength. That's so genius, you know? I mean, it's better. It would be technically better to have a command spell so he can use the teleportation, but like they're on the same wavelength. It's the Castor Rianosuke thing. And we saw Castor was literally strong enough to like 1v5, you know? And part of that, I think, was just they were on the same wavelength. You know, they were doing their thing. Win the Holy Grail, get victory, conquer the world. Dude. I love this shit. Waver's the best character. I love Waver. It's crazy, dude. Whether you like it, Master or not, you are my friend. Like, let us write out as equals, bro. Oh my goodness, it's enough to make a grown man cry. When does he say, so hold your he chest high and consider yourself my equal. Open your eyes and watch it to the end. He said, dude, he, he got that, he put respect on Waver's name, bro. It's so, it's hilarious. It's genuinely hilarious to compare this beautiful relationship to Emiya and Saber. Just as an idea of how fucked everything is. <laughs> how bad it's gotten, bro. Emiya and Saber aren't even talking to each other. She's like, well, I'm gonna go look for Eerie. And he just lo watches her leave. And then on the other side of the fence, it's, I command you to conquer the world. And then he says, damn right, and you're coming with me. My friend, my equal. Like, it's, you can't compare the two. It's that good. I love it. I absolutely, I just, it's so good, bro. And like, like it's it's crazy. I was at first like, bro, they're we're really spending time talking to this grandpa, but they actually made that kind of goaded, you know? Being like a moment of like, like a moment for waiver to really think, like, it's crazy, bro. I just, I love it. I love it. It's so good. Okay. And then, okay. So let's, I, there was a moment I wanted to, like, like I think the word sacrifice was thrown in, and I thought it was a really good line. Um, many times he's been forced to sacrifice his loved ones for his beliefs, right? It's like, I feel like, I feel like you could maybe do a comparison with this line to, like, the whole Korea situation, where he was, like, sacrificing his own life for homegirl, for his girl, and to, like, save Sakura or whatever, and then at the end of things, he's like... You don't, you know, and then he gets, you never loved anyone, and he ends up choking her out. So it's like all his sacrifice was for nothing, right? 
And so just sacrificing something doesn't, like, a sacrifice does not mean you are entitled to anything. Type beat. I really like that idea, you know, with, and kind of how we saw it with, um, Korea. And so it's like, he sacrificed people for his beliefs, but that doesn't validate his beliefs, you know? And the thing is, I don't disagree with his beliefs, right? Conflict, bad. Human life, good. Human suffering, bad. Kindness, good. People living happily without dying, good. You know, it's like, well, yeah, no dip. Of course I agree with you. And the crazy thing is probably most people agree with that, right? There's a reason, though, that we still have conflict, right? Um, and so I, I'm, 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 I thought that was, like, an interesting moment of, like, like, when I read, like, well, he's, he's, he has to hope for a miracle. He sacrificed people, you know? It's like, well, but that doesn't really mean anything. I feel like that's what we just learned last episode is, like, how much it means nothing, right? Um, and then, like, he is too kind to chase ideals, I, I didn't really get this because she says he can't help but love others despite knowing he'll eventually lose them. So she's kind of making the point of he's not chasing ideals because he still loves people, you know? And so instead of chasing an ideal that he like set, like gets rid of them for. But the thing is he is chasing an ideal. He's chasing an ideal of what he, like the wish is he's putting his ideal into the fabric of the world, right? He's, he's trying to uh, remove conflict. I mean, that seems to be very simply what it is. We've kind of gotten a definition of his wish. He wishes for humanity, humanity as salvation, the elimination of war and bloodshed for eternal peace on earth. So, yeah. But, like, how would that manifest? And that's the very, very fair thing. Because this is an untested grail. No one succeeded with the grail before. So, like, you know, there's... It's, it's kind of like a trope of the wish-granting device, but it twists your wish and destroys you. That's a trope, right? Oh, uh, King Midas type beat, right? Like, oh, I want a bunch of gold. Oops, I'm turning everything to gold, including those I loved. And oh, my, my, my pride has become my, has been, been my undoing, right? Like, yeah, that's a, that's a super common trope. I feel like he's falling into that trope, but very potentially because it's an untested grail that we don't know what the wish will do. And so if he just says, I wish for humanity's salvation, the elimination of war and bloodshed, then it's like, what does that do? Does that sedate humanity so that they no longer can feel like conflicted with each other? And then what? what like, could we not just die out? Like what the elimination of war and bloodshed? C could you, I mean, if you really want to be crazy with wording, could you say that like the, uh, a war on animals, a war on the earth itself. What, like, now all humans have to dismantle all fossil fuels and, like, stop eating animals? And it's like, we have to be a freaking grass, you know, you know, we have to all be vegetarian now? And I know some people out there are like, oh, this is lit. But, like, I got bad news. We do not have the infrastructure to deal with that. That is causing mass human death, no matter what. If we just all of a sudden said, no more meat, now we take care of the environment perfectly, we don't have time to transition out of that. You know, that's we got to do that more gradually. We can't do that in one second, you know? So it's just going to cause mass human death. So, but like, let's say, let's say the grail, and this is now where we're in assumption territory. And the crazy thing is I'm assuming this, but the characters have to assume the same step too. Let's assume it does the sentiment, right? It can understand Emiya's heart as, oh, humanity, salvation. It can understand his like image of that. Even then like what people don't fight anymore there's no more war i mean war breaks out for a lot of different reasons a lot of it is because of unchecked greed probably so is it like what's stopping people now no people don't feel greed anymore nations don't feel the greed that propels them to do conflict maybe like if someone tries to have conflict their brain just doesn't let them like like what does this mean this it's it's just so essential to humanity to be conflicted we've always been fighting each other we've always been enslaving each other we've always been do being horrible to each other and that's a bad thing but if you just rip it out at the roots are you not going to just rip out the human soul itself i think that's a very fair fair thing to worry about it doesn't even work as an ideal it's practically a childish joke like that's the thing it's like I agree with him, but you can't rip it out at the root. You're going to cause too much damage, bro. It's like ripping it. It's like, it's like, like, I feel like it's the equivalent of putting your hand inside someone's brain and just ripping out the conflict center. Bro, you do not know what else you've accidentally ripped out because that shit complicated. The human soul and then like what conflict means within oneself, right? Could mean so many things, right? salvation is there an is there an objective salvation that the grail can understand or is it just going to be based on emia's subjective idea of salvation which has been run through a multitude of biases through war a million times over right 
Like, Homeboy's seen the worst of humanity. Does that put him into the position to be its savior? I mean, probably, kind of, but I, I just don't trust it, bro. And it's not like Eerie has any idea. Like, this is gonna sound crazy. She kind of got groomed. And I know, you're, like, groom's a big word. I should probably use a different word. But, like, she literally was raised with this guy being told about his wish and how, like, 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 it's not like she's exactly been, you know, exposed to counterexamples or, like, rational, logical thinking. Or, like, she she's not in a position to, to like you know, explore her own rationality in deconstructing or reconstructing an argument. She's pretty much just going to yes man him, right? That's more what I'm trying to say. Um, though it is crazy how, you know, she got born as an adult, you know, kind of deal. And so, yeah, that's, it, it, it makes it so her, her saying this, it's like, Eerie, you don't really have a leg to stay. You're just kind of repeating his thing, which is fine. But if his thing is literally just humanity, salvation, get like, Elimination of War or Bloodshed? I, like, is every war unjustified? Or if you get rid of every war, now is there no reason to justify a war? Like, peace? Is peace good? Yeah, peace is good. I like peace. What would be wrong? Like, I'm assuming, let's, like, like if we take it, like, let's say it goes well. Let's say the wish works, right? How? What, what is the best case scenario for this wish? I feel like that's the question because I, I could go out on a limb. It's a limb. It's a, it's a guess. And it's not a guess that I would ever do myself, but I could guess that the, the grail kind of does it perfectly, that it understands his sentiment and, and makes that come to life in the best way possible. And that his sentiment isn't like corroded and it actually is real, like somewhat realistic in a sense. Let's just assume all these things magically. What would that equal to? Would it work? Is that possible? Right? Where eternal peace is, like, lit and we're just happy and people don't die anymore in war. Like, I think, but I don't even know how. And I guess that's the point of the Grail, is you need the Grail to do it. Which is, I guess, exactly what she was saying, Is right? He has faith and you don't. He has faith... That's the crazy thing, though. He has faith in the Grail? All you've been told about the Grail is it's a wish-granting device from all the wizards. And the wizards are freaking crazy. You know, who's to say the the Grail has good intentions and will do it good? Who? Tr why do you trust the Grail? You know, I mean, you 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 lambast and go against the idea of the hero, right? You you tore into saber about that. Are you not doing the same thing with the Grail? You don't have faith in heroes, but you have faith in the Grail. That's like I kind of don't get that, you know? Because <sighs> yeah, I mean that's kind of the, been his the thing I've where I've, how I've read him, especially with like Saber in the in the thing with Lancer killing himself, where it's like he doesn't trust Saber to do it, so he's gonna do it himself, right? I, I feel like he's always been the guy to like he takes it into his own hands. He bombs the buildings. He he makes the Archibald stuff at gunpoint. He does all the work, right? Because he trusts himself and he you know um, that type deal. But for him to suddenly be like now he's going out on the limb to use the Grail, I don't know if you should trust the Grail, brother. Especially when, like, the there's an extra level of the Grail, which is literally set, kill your own hero. Like, that sounds like a blood, evil blood magic type deal, right? That sounds not great, you know? Where it's the sacrifice of these heroic spirits in combat. Like, is that good intention? You really trust it to be a perfectly neutral tool that will bend to your will? As advertised? Brother, we've all been scammed before, Okay. So I guess that's my worry. It's 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 the same thing I've been saying, but like with an extra layer now, where it's, I trust his ideals. I like his ideals. The problem's execution. And that's the ev problem with every like utilitarianism. Like the problem with like everything, you know? Executions, like that's why people disagree. Is because that's, that's why checks and balances, dog. That's why one person, that's why doubt's important. Self-doubt is important. To a degree. You can't have too much self-doubt that you're paralyzed, but you can't have so, n the lack of self-doubt so that you trust yourself too much. Because if you trust yourself too much, you're going to make the world worse. Because you will not... Because guess what? The road to hell is paved in good intentions. And if you think otherwise, and you think, oh no, but my intentions are always perfect. Guess what? Pride... Bec pride equal big fall, okay? You will fall from your grace, from your pride, your, your erected monument of stubbornness. And everything will be bad. Basically, you know, like, read a book. You know what I mean? That's my cure for pride. Read a book. <laughs> yeah. So that's where I feel like Emmy is going. Especially when he hasn't slept for 40 hours. And his he feels like he's completely alone. 
and he is completely alone because he has no relationships with anybody that's alive. Uh, and, I, and I know you're saying Saber. Yeah, that's not much of a relationship, dog. Uh, yeah. So, Emiya's on a doom path. Um... It's like, where did you get Maya from? Maya was probably just as much a yes man as Eerie was. Oh my guy. I understand the impulse to trust only yourself, and I honestly respect it. I really do respect it, if nothing else. But I'm much more in a Skondar type B, right? Where it's like, he cares about other people, and he's, you know what I mean? He takes other people in, and like, there's such a focus on like communal stuff, instead of it always retreating to, I'm alone in the world, you know? And doing things for his soldiers, right? That type B, it's so much more lit. He, It's like the two versions of, like, insane pride, you know? He's got such incredible pride, but he also has pride in, like, all these other people and things. Where Emi is fine to be alone and put and is fine to push, like, never form a relationship with Saber and all these things. That's the problem. Because he has no one to check him, right? Because that's the difference, bro. If I feel like if Iskandar had somebody say, You're wrong about this thing. Let me tell you why. If Iskandar respected the guy, I think he would listen, you know? And I, he does respect people. He respects Waver as an equal. I trust him when he says this. Not as a complete, like, equal is a big word, but, like, I, 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 I trust the sentiment to be true. He's not lying, right? Same thing with his soldiers. Like, I trust that, you know, that he would listen to other people. Emiya, I don't think would. And it's not a problem when, if Emiya has, if Emiya really is, like, oh, he's kind and he's he's got pure intentions. But that's not enough. Pure intentions are not enough. A good soul is not enough, okay? That's the, that's the crazy thing. I don't care if you are literally have an angelic soul, okay? That does not mean that you will not do evil. <sighs> that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. So, yeah. Emiya's stocks are in free fall. Um, he seems to be on a, a doom path. Korea is obviously in doom spiral too. I'm a little confused as to why... Um, why homeboy who said it uh here where where uh Kure was like oh just send berserker to deal with saber if, she, if he gets here if she gets here too fast i didn't really get that because i feel like won't korea not at all be in support of this relationship with him anymore because why would he be when he just got literally trolled the hardest i've ever seen someone get trolled in my life right i assume that korea is not cool with anyone anymore and is gone doom mode and it's not like you can't command Berserker. You have to have Korea do that. So I don't know why he said that. I'm a little confused about his plan there. I mean, let me, you did say that, yeah? Um, right here. Saber appears here before I return. Have Berserker entertain her for a while. And Kira, you're saying this? Oh, Gilgamesh is. Yeah, so understood. You don't have that power, my dog. I feel like Korea is just going to like show up to Berserker and be like, command spell kill everything i don't care anymore i mean he's not gonna say that probably but you know I, I i think he has gone full wild card mode we have we have four players we have korea wild card um we have kire uh troll literally just bad intentions wants to have fun great for my viewing pleasure but you know uh we have kire or no no kire is who i just said we have emia who seems to be like fully devoted to this plan that I don't trust. I think it's really just faith. It's a gamble. It's a bit of a Hail Mary. There's very high reward, but I think there's quite a bit of risk that he is not willing to think about, you know? Uh, and he also, I don't trust him to be victorious because he and Saber are at odds and Saber's his biggest tool and his biggest tool he disagrees with. And, you know, he only has so many command spells. Um, and then we have Waver and Iskandar, who honestly I want to win at this point, um, because I trust them. I feel like if if Iskandar gets it, he's just gonna wish to live here forever, and that you know, like let me live forever. And I, I and that is freaking life affirmation one hundred and one. And if if he gets, maybe Waver can get some of that too, and they just become is, like immortal bros. Wouldn't that be cool? Immortal best friends going around. Conquering the world? Okay, maybe not, not that part because bloodshed, but like, you know, I'll let it slide just this once. These two, these two, <laughs> that's the crazy thing, bro. How did Waver and Iskandar become the best ones? Honestly, the best options. All these wizards are crazy, bro. I want nobody to win and Iskandar to continue living. I don't know how that would work. If the, if, if the Grail ritual fails, do all the heroic spirits leave? 
right? If the girl gets like summoned and then shattered into pieces and Iskandar's still standing there, can't he just keep hanging out as Waver's friend, free to roam the earth? That would be the good ending, you know? I mean, honest, the best ending is Emiya gets the grail and it somehow works perfectly. Guys, it's a grail made by wizards in a blood ritual of dreams and ideals and hero heroism. Okay, I don't trust this thing. Especially if you give it a vague save the world ideal. I don't trust it, okay? I, you would probably have to be specific with a bunch of... Honestly, go reach the root, okay? A couple people have done that. Somebody just go reach the root. No, wait, but then you'd have to have Iskandar kill himself. No, don't do that. Nobody reach the root. Who cares about the root anyways, bro? I don't care about my origin. Your magical origin. The, the, the beginnings of everything. And I'm just trying to live life, man. Iskandar 101. Uh, yeah... Dang, I kind of want to. Oh, I kind of want to watch another. Okay, I'm not gonna watch another in this episode. And you already knew that when you clicked the episode. My reason being, I'm gonna watch another one in like three days, anyways, because I'm late to this episode, which means I have to have another one out by Friday. If I just watch one more in the next three days, that's super doable. Bet I get to like I get to basically watch another one, and I get to correct my schedule at the same time. Oh my goodness, it's a win-win for your boy. But yeah, um, really great episode, really good episode. Eerie dying is just, it's, she, wow, she went out horribly. What an L for her. Um, better than Maya, honestly. Better than Maya. Maya really got double hoed. So, and at least Eerie is still somewhat alive in a spiritual way, in a really freaky way. I mean, like, look at her, bro. The end is almost at hand. Doesn't she, like, smile here? As she, like, reflects into herself? She gives a devious little smile, bro. This looks evil. Eerie, why do you look like evil, man? Oh, seven really big lumps is referring to the seven heroic spirits. I get it. Prisma Illa is having the dream of her becoming the grail and, be and seven heroic spirits being sacrificed so that somebody can reach the root. Honestly, that's prob- Okay, new new guest just dropped. And if I'm right, people are going to complain that I watched uh, Fate Zero instead of reading the visual novel first. I feel like- So this is a prequel, right? I've intentionally tried not to think about it too much, but I'm going to think about it now because we're close to the end here. It's a prequel. I think nothing's going to happen in this Grail victory. I don't think anyone's going to get the Grail. I think it's going to basically be a GG. Um, reason being, Emiya can't get it because you can't- if he, he, if he did, he would wish for no more conflict. All right, let's say he might be able to get it, but he won't be able to wish- for no more conflict, that wish is going to fail if he gets it. Because there needs to, this is a prequel, okay? And there's no way the next story takes place in a world where there is no conflict. That does not make sense, right? Like, it just almost cannot be the case. Um, rather, uh, and then this, and then this, where Prisma Illa is, is have, had a horrible nightmare about seven her spirits being sacrificed. I feel like, because that's what it is. Seven lumps impairing inside of her while she's a cup is the it's it's the deeper root. It's the deeper grail victory where you go for the root. Because if it's seven, that means I'm thinking all seven get sacrificed so you can drink from the chalice. Oh my goodness, it's the holy grail, and the seven really big lumps are the seven heroic spirits being being put into the freaking elixir, bro. And then you go like your Gilgamesh, and then you go to the root. That's some pretty cool imagery. Uh, but yeah, so I'm thinking the next challenge is going to have people trying to do this. I feel like there's going to be another Grail War. Prisma Illa is going to become the next vessel. This is all foreshadowing. Um, and people are going to, and this sacrifice might even happen. So that would be really worrying, huh? I don't actually know if that's going to, obviously, you know, it's, this is the fate that she's trying to have of not happen. Um... So we can hope that, you know, maybe a wish somehow gets done that this gets avoided. Look, she's wearing black and red. Are you kidding me, man? These are, these are evil colors. <laughs> you know, those are the bl blood. Those are, those are not, those don't make me happy. Those are not happy yay yay colors. I guess she's wearing black and red in this too. Um, it looks like. Rest in peace, Eerie. Um, yeah. Honestly, though, I'm going to leave it there. Best part of the episode, Waver doing the three commands. This was so lit. By my command spell, I, Waver Velvet, order you. Rider, fight until you get... I'm watching it one more time. I don't care. Then I'll end the episode. Dude!
good. It's so good. Look at the way Ryder just just looks. I love that so much. And I love if you can hear in Waver's voice. He's sad about it, bro. And you're coming with me. Damn right. Damn right, Ryder. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. Oh my goodness, things are going so wrong for everybody except Waver and Ryder. Investment paying off. That's all I got for this one, y'all. On to the next episode 23. Of course, of course, of course. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe. If you're new, blah, blah, blah. Comment down below if you have anything to say or join the Discord and talk to me or their fade zero fans. They're all in the description, of course. But until then, until the next episode, that's covered. I will be seeing you then. Peace.